वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला इन दिस पेपर इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज टीचिंग वी आर डिस्कसिंग लैंग्वेज टीचिंग थियरीज आई एम डॉक्टर नीरू टंडन फ्रॉम वी एस एस डी कॉलेज कानपुर एंड दिस मॉड्यूल हैज बीन रिटन बाय डॉक्टर संध्या तिवारी वी आर डिस्कसिंग थियरीज लाइक वेन एवर वी डील विद एनी सब्जेक्ट any science we think about a particular theory when it comes to english language teaching do we need a theory it is a language and the purpose of language is to communicate if i can speak it cool why should i need a theory but english language is not just a language any language for that matter has got some scientific things in it and when we discuss that particular language in a way in a to elaborate it we should understand then we need theories how to develop it we just we have a language that is not enough we are supposed to develop it we are support supposed to teach it because the problems come problems like how to teach the mixed ability class problem someone who knows the mother tongue how to teach him someone whose language is the first language then the approach will be different methodology will be different technique will be different so all these things they need theory so that's why the theories of language learning we are discussing in this module this will show students that how the most generally accepted theoretical and methodological theories of language teaching and learnings are there this module is practical offering teachers pedagogical ideas to meet the specific needs of various ages proficiency levels purposes skills and context of the specific language learners now theories of language learning and teaching you know language learning is one thing and language teaching is another thing theories they are connecting the language learners and language teachers they help both so language learning and teaching explores the relationship of learning theories to second language learning instruction student assessment motivation and investment self regulation and engagement in the tisol classroom while teaching the explosion of approaches and modules is a prominent characteristics of contemporary language teaching as second language here we are talking about elt english language teaching as the second language as a foreign language it symbolizes the strength and scope of the profession theory is an essential ingredient because it guides the way in which language practitioners opine and approach teaching learning process theory helps to predict theory helps to explain and theory helps to assess situation and possibilities and it provides a rationale to react and intervene language acquisition process so you see that theory the role of theory comes in the second language acquisition and because english is a second language for indians we don't count english as a foreign language anymore rather we take it as a second language so in the process of acquisition we just find it and explain various theories it is important that the learners and teachers they acknowledge and understand their theoretical framework from established and researched the theories and not from mere assumptions and beliefs that are guided by their personal or professional experiences the multiplicity and plurality of language learning theories owes to the fact that language learning is a complex process and is closely related to other disciplines like linguistics 
सोशियो लिंग्विस्टिक्स साइकोलॉजी एंड सोशियोलॉजी ऑल दो द प्रोसेस ऑफ लर्निंग अ न्यू लैंग्वेज इज जनरली कॉम्प्लेक्स बट इट इज नॉट एंटायरली अनप्रिडिक्टेबल इट्स क्लोज कनेक्शन टू ह्यूमन कल्चर एंड इवोल्यूशन ऑफ लाइफ स्टाइल मेक्स इट एन इंटरेस्टिंग सब्जेक्ट ऑफ ए स्टडी एंड थियोरीज हेल्प इन इट in addition to main theories there are other theories that address how people learn now it's a matter of curiosity how people learn how these languages come into your system how a person inclined to learn another language what is the situation of the brain does it hamper the growth or it accelerates it there are many things many questions answered by theories more than 35 prominent theories of learning from the behavioral cognitive constructive human and social traditions were subjected to a textual review and constant comparative analysis in search of common themes that represent universal and fundamental principles of learning so those questions that what is the situation of the human brain while learning the second language when a person is there to acquire a second or the third language how does the brain responds these is the this is the area of study in various theories when swedish scientists used brain scans to observe the new language learning process they discovered that learning a foreign language can increase the size of the brain size of the brain means the capacity to accumulate more recent brain based research studies have proved that people who speak more than one language fluently have better memories and are more cognitively creative and mentally flexible than monolinguals monolingual means who speaks only one language you can see in this picture that brain areas are involved in language in various colors and that explains the theory of these scientists now behaviorism and learning behaviorism is a word view that assumes that a learner in the process of learning responds only to stimuli Ivan Pavlov a big name in this particular theory in 1927 he started this language learning experiments through classical conditioning Pavlov demonstrated his assertions by the dog's response to stimuli now you can understand with this story that is quite prevalent with Pavlov's experiment that there was a dog and every day a uh, this dog was given the food with a sound of a bell as soon as the bell is there the food is given and this dog had salivation and he was ready for food after some time the bell was there but no food was there even then the salivation was there so stimuli was there and he learned it that was the experiment that was done by pavlov and how he connected it with language learning it came in the form of a theory this became a stepping stone in the theories based on behavior now another theory according to skinner there are two kinds of reinforcers primary reinforcers of those things like food water and air secondary reinforcers or things like incentive praise and promotion and he they said that learning comes out of all these things you need the reinforcers the uh, whenever you are teaching a new thing or a learner is learning a new thing there some reinforcer should be there now cognitivism universal grammar theory The development of universal grammar theory was during a critical period. This theory is originally based on first language acquisition L1. It is closely related to cognition related psychology principles. A baby can tell the difference between the words like mom or a mat without actually understanding the difference 
or the meaning of these two words the idea that explains this is known as universal grammar theory the theory states that all children are born with the innate ability to acquire develop and understand a language nobody has taught him that what are the parameters of mat or mat will be of this color or that color or mom is such a person no he understands it when you say mom he responds in the same way when you say mat he responds in a different way so that is the innate capability of a child to understand a particular language but that is true for l1 what is the position of l2 the theories are there to define that while different languages may have different kinds of grammar humans have a natural tendency to learn and use them that is why the humans are different from animals this theory is not certainly concerned with conventional rules it does not deal with the passive or relative clauses or any particular construction as such in this theory rules are seen as the interaction of various principles and settings for parameters now the common belief is that language has an inherent genetic component and the human brain can develop grammatical language even without being exposed to it as a baby the man credited with this revolution is mit linguistics professor neom chomsky you can see on the screen noam chomsky who has made distinguished achievements in fields of linguistics philosophy intellectual history and international politics in the same way in language learning theories his name is a big name he is the best known for his contribution in the field of linguistics chomsky established the world famous transformational generative grammar just gestalt learning theory gestalt became one of the main theories of learning and also included in the language learning field the three main gestalt theorist were damer kohler and kafka they were all germans the term gestalt was coined by graf christian von whose ideas influenced the trio of these theorist The Gestalt theory proposes that learning consists of grasping of a structural whole and not just an impulsive subconscious response to a stimulus. This is the picture of the Gestalt theory where you will come to know how brain works and how it accumulates as far as the second language learning is concerned. This theory proposes that learning consists of the grasping of a structural whole and not just a mechanical response to a stimulus another big name in the name of theorist is stephen crashen first language acquisition generally refers to the natural learning of language which takes place in childhood since birth whereas language learning on the other hand relates to structured and planned language instruction as in the school or in the college setting or any other phase of life acquisition is a subconscious process of uninstructed implicit or natural learning learning describes the conscious effort to study to understand and acquire knowledge of grammatical rules that are associated with target language of education now when we understand the theory of the crashen there are certain points that we cannot ignore we must understand as far as the theory of second language acquisition is concerned there are the six main hypotheses first the acquisition learning hypothesis the monitor hypothesis the natural order hypothesis the input hypothesis affective filter hypothesis and finally the reading hypothesis according to crashen's theory the conducive way to learn a language is through natural communication as a second language learner or a second language teacher 
the ideal for the teacher should create a situation wherein language is used in order to fulfill real life situation every day activities where you can just connect yourself with the content you are you can connect yourself with the situation and not only with the form this in turn will help students to acquire the language instead of just the learning it that is the difference between learning something or acquiring something krishen just laid emphasis on acquiring and not on just learning there are some critical responses to this theory the general belief in the second language learning has too often been explained in terms that the primary goal of second language learning is being able to attain moderate or reasonable communicative competence learning and acquiring a reservoir of vocabulary at the cost of grammar skills will harm productivity and participation in the target language of the learner error identification and correction have little or no effect on subconscious acquisition but it takes an important place in the process of conscious learning error correction apparently benefits the learner to understand and practice the correct structure form and rules but when it comes to speaking when it comes to fluency when it comes to expression he is at the back door now there are some academic reaction to krishen's theory i quote ellis he said the monitor model poses serious theoretical problems regarding the validity of the acquisition learning distinction the operation of monitoring and the explanation of variability in language learner language unquote ls again said the lucidity simplicity and explanatory power of krishen's theory is commendable greg he said each of krishen's hypothesis is marked by serious flaws undefinable or ill defined terms unmotivated constructs lack of empirical content and thus of falsifiability lack of explanatory power light bound he said a combination of a linguistic theory through its natural order hypothesis social psychological theory through its affective filter hypothesis psychological learning theory through its acquisition learning hypothesis discourse analysis and socio linguistic theory through both the comprehensible input hypothesis and the monitor hypothesis is there michel and miles they said the concepts of understanding and noticing a gap are not clearly operationalized or consistently proposed it is not clear how the learner's present state of knowledge that is l1 is to be characterized or indeed whether the i plus 1 formulation is intended to apply to all aspects of language from lexics to phonology and syntax unquote McLaughlin said Krishen's theory fails at every juncture Krishen has not defined his terms with enough precision the empirical basis of the theory is weak and the theory is not clear in its predictions unquote now some anti krishen opinions from california are also worth noting alice callaghan he said it is a parasite on the backs of poor latino children unquote now isaac kubilos who is the editor of the latino beat he said more than 2.5 million kids statewide have not made it as a result of bilingual education what an atrocious situation and krishen helped to create this unquote i discovered that dr krishen has done no research it is purely a theory there is no test data there are no schools where it has been proved and it is based on thin air unquote krishen denied having ever criticized that study he will say anything to win over a room that was said by christine rochel david tokovsky he said i quote 
this is how every administrator in the state got promoted from assistant principal to principal or from teacher to bilingual coordinator or from regional superintendent to district superintendent by chanting the mantra of rama rama krishen krishen rama rama unquote truly he was mocking at him one stunned non educator in the audience said i quote an impromptu to receiving line formed of teachers lining up for a chance to touch their guru their pied piper it was eerie it was the church of krishen unquote now you see that krishen has just invited a number of criticism critics who could understand his theory were there persons who commented just for the sake of commenting upon his theory were there so he just said love me or hate me but you cannot ignore me krishen's theory still has many good points as far as the theory of language learning is concerned whenever the theorist sit to talk about various new methods or approaches or theories they do discuss krishen's methodology or kishan's approach of language learning now we will move on to another theory that is a script theory a script theory is predominantly proposed to expound language processing and higher thinking skills it is interesting to note to demonstrate this theory a variety of computer programs have been developed shank applies his theoretical framework to storytelling and the development of intelligent tutors shang and clary describe the application of these ideas to educational software the central focus of his theory has been the structure of knowledge especially in the context of language understanding now when i just explain the script to theory it is easy for me to make you understand with the help of your age your childhood when you were a child then your great mothers grandmothers or the mothers or the elders they used to tell you various stories why all the time they wanted to entertain you no with that entertainment there comes the teaching the teaching of a particular language in which they were telling you those stories with the help of those stories they were tell you they were telling you many words with the learning of those words you were trying to get connectors and forming the sentences you were just getting the tenses once upon a time there was a king you could understand that whatever it is not there it is a matter of past he was telling you the language which was just inherent in various things so this script theory is following that particular mode shank outlined this approach and he outlined con contextual dependency theory which deals with the representation of meanings in sentences building upon this framework shank and abelson introduced the concept of scripts plans and themes to handle story level understanding later work elaborated this theory to encompass other aspect of cognition conceptualization is defined as an act or doing something to an object in a direction all conceptualization can be analyzed in terms of a small number of primitive acts all memory is episodic and organized in terms of the scripts we just try to remember various scripts scripts allow individuals to make inferences and hence understand verbal or written discourse higher level expectations are created by goals and plans the key element of conceptual dependency theory is the idea that all conceptualizations can be represented in terms of a small number of 
primitive acts. In Shank's theory, all memory is episodic that is organized around personal experiences rather than semantic categories. Generalized episodes are called scripts. Specific memories are stored as pointer to scripts plus any unique events for a particular episode. Scripts, they allow individuals to make inferences needed for understanding by filling in missing information. Shank uses script theory as the basis for a dynamic model of memory. This model suggests that events are understood in terms of scripts, plans and other knowledge structures as well as relevant previous experiences. The third type of theory that language learners talk about is known as constructivist learning theory. The core ideas of this theory were propounded by John Dewey. Now try to understand what is constructivist learning theory. It is a meta concept. It is not just another way of knowing. Rather, it is a way of thinking about knowing. This communication theory suggests that each reader and each listener will use this content in his own way. This theory believes that learning is an active process and varies individual to individual. It also depends on the learner's knowledge and background. Knowledge is not just out there. Knowledge is just not out there, it is inside the learner also. It is an interpretation of reality. It is not the true representation of reality. So, whenever we deal with this theory of learning, we should take it in mind that it believes that the learner has the capability inside and whatever he will learn and how he will learn will depend upon his capabilities, his previous knowledge, context and his just understanding level. So, the main point of this theory is that learning is a social activity. Learning, it happens in mind and physical capability does not mean much. Learning is contextual and it takes time. It is not so spontaneous. Just the repeating or imitating does not just mean the real learning. And motivation is a necessary factor. So whosoever believes in this theory teaches learner English language in a different way and tries to understand the capacity of that particular learner, that particular individual and then teaches him, tries to put him on another level, motivates him and tries to teach him. So that is the theory of constructivism. To conclude, it is interesting that the three main categories into which learning theories falls, namely behaviorist theory, cognitive theory and constructive theories. They are impressive in the kind of new learning they brought in the domain of language learning. To sum up, we can say that these theories are very helpful when you come to do the research in the field of language learning. You understand the theoretical dimensions and you try to do research and just go ahead of these theories to understand the language in a better way and to make it more interesting and easy for the learners. Thank you for visiting EPG Pathshala.